Breaking news from men's college basketball. Ohio State has fired head coach Chris Holtman in his seventh season at the helm. That's been confirmed by our Matt Norlander. The Buckeyes are near the bottom of the Big Ten, sitting at 4-10 and 10 in the conference and 14-11 and 11 overall, putting them on track to miss the NCAA tournament for a second consecutive season. The move comes with about a month ago in the regular season, and now the Buckeyes' first game without Holtman. Well, that will be a tough one. They take on number two Purdue this Sunday on a game that will air on CBS. You look at the tenure of Holtman and it was one that started with a lot of promise in his first five seasons, compiled a record of 137 wins compared to 86 losses, but just 30 and 30 over the past two seasons made the NCAA tournament in four of his first five seasons, but never was able to make it past the second round. And he was named the 2018 Big Ten Coach of the Year, but he is now out at Ohio State. Matt Norlander joining us now as we talk more about uh, Holtman being fired. Matt, of first, your original thoughts and reaction to this news. Uh, the timing of this actually arrives as something of a stunner here. There was obviously a lot of buzz around whether or not Gene Smith, who is set to retire as Ohio State's athletic director uh, later this spring, would make a move and fire Chris Holtman. He, he brought Chris Holtman aboard. Uh, remember the timing of his hiring was odd because it happened in June uh, some years back after Thad Mata wound up stepping away and leaving Ohio State. Uh, but to happen on Valentine's Day in the in the middle of February, um, it obviously has uh, particularly odd timing. Ohio State has had some struggles. Holtman undeniably has been a letdown this season. Um, he did have uh, an NCAA tournament quality team, his first five seasons on the job. Remember, there was the no 2020 tournament, but Ohio State was easily in the field there. But it has gone from five straight years of having an NCAA tournament team to not being remotely in the field last season. And now you see the bottom of the Big Ten ledger. Coincidentally enough, the athletic director at Michigan spoke earlier today, basically reinforcing the idea, and I had heard this from sources recently, that Ward Manuel is not looking to move on from Jawan Howard at Michigan. Meantime, Michigan's rival uh, makes a move with their head coach, and now this becomes the second job in a power conference to open. DePaul is already open. More others will open. Ohio State, you know, it, it registers, Zach, as a... Uh, is, is definitely one of the 2015 best jobs in all of men's college basketball. Um, some see this as a pro, some see it as a con. The fact that you are so overshadowed by the football program, basketball is not nearly as emphasized there as some other spots in high majors. Uh, but because of that, you can argue the pressure is less. But if you wanted to argue that, I toss it right back at you. They fired their coach in the middle of February, not allowing Chris Holtman to uh, try and pull out a late season run and save his job. Yeah, when five and 15 in Big Ten play last season, just four and 10 this year. They started the year hot, though, and then now out of their past 11, they've won just two games. What do you think went wrong so fast from last year and this year to completely just take the wheels off? Well, I have the answer to this because I've actually talked uh, on record about this with Chris Holtman previously uh, months ago last season and this season uh, Chris Holtman and his staff made uh, a very uh, intentional decision to go young to bring in some NBA level talent and that has been the case Chris Holtman has actually produced a first round lottery level talent at Ohio State but that talent did not translate to NCAA tournament success and so by choosing to go younger and try to build the program that way and not lean as heavily on using the transfer portal, it's not that Ohio State didn't bring transfers in. It did, but he built young. And with that, uh, particularly as, as being old in this era, Zach, when everyone's got the bonus COVID year and so on, average college basketball has been as old as ever. It set Ohio State way back in the Big Ten and relying on useful players, in addition to having some injuries, uh, became too, too much to overcome. And for any coaches that are in similar positions, frankly, Chris Phil Holtman's uh, firing serves as a warning to where uh, you, if you're at a high major program, uh, unless you are bringing in multiple five stars, uh, you should be leaning on veterans and portal additions in order to best uh, set yourself up for success moving forward. Because this idea that you can rely on first year players, even if talented and a bevy of them to get it done, uh, most places, particularly if you're not a blue blood, that's just not going to work in this modern era of college basketball. Yeah, that young Ohio State team will again have to play this Sunday against Purdue, a game that will air on CBS. But let's look a little bit past Sunday and look towards the future of maybe who might be the next in line to coach at Ohio State. Who are some potential uh, targets you see that might be out there? 
All right, so let's be very clear about this. So Gene Smith is retiring. Ross Bjork is going to take over the job as athletic director. If I'm Ross Bjork, and Gene Smith's probably going to have a little bit of say in this, here are names that I would target, which isn't to say this is definitely, I mean, we are minutes removed from Chris Holtman being fired here. Dusty May, an obvious target. Uh, keep an eye there because his services will be uh, will be courted heavily across the high majors. Greg McDermott at Creighton is a tremendous coach, has the Blue Jays tracking toward it again. And while he has been there a while, I just think he's worth a phone call. Lamont Paris has Big Ten ties, deep Big Ten ties at Wisconsin. He might be the front runner for National Coach of the Year at South Carolina. Uh, maybe he would be open and willing to, uh, to move back to the Midwest. Sean Miller is an intriguing one. He is in state. He is at Xavier right now. Uh, he has a very, very good X and O reputation. Uh, I just, I put a call in and just and do a temperature check there. And then Nate Oates is intriguing only because he uh, he has a big contract and he has a sizable buyout. Um, he is getting it done right now at a program where football means everything and basketball is a distant second in that. Um, but he has a very good style of play. Uh, he really embraces a, a modern uh, three-pointers layup to eliminate the mid-range there. And you can see what Alabama has been able to do. So, uh, again, that is an initial call list if I'm Ohio State brass about uh, trying to get a temperature check. Uh, it would be stunning, frankly, given the uh, the high esteem this job is held in if the Buckeyes weren't ultimately able to poach a sitting head coach from a from a fellow power conference. Looking for a new head coach, but in the short term, who will coach Ohio State this Sunday when they take on Purdue on CBS? Uh, well, I think that officially remains to be seen as we as we await to see the update from Ohio State. Uh, was told by a source that the players had not even met with the team at this point. And so amid all that, it's a very big, heavy transition period here. You mentioned the Purdue game that's upcoming. And now Ohio State just needs to try and pick up its pieces and adjust moving forward and try and salvage this season. Clearly, I think one more thing I want to add here is by nature of doing this, uh, Gene Smith is trying to have one more play on maybe we can pull a rabbit out of a hat and something drastic like this can can alter our season moving forward but more than anything this is a get to get ahead of the market officially and know that the ohio state job is open and hopefully that they can have a a, a lead on uh, any other school because uh, frankly uh, depaul and ohio state are in completely different stratospheres when it comes to uh, reasonable job candidates yeah, trying to get that first crack at figuring out who they want to bring in. The situation, do you think, is there any hope that, that the firing right here can spark enough to make a run to the Big Ten tournament and win it all? Is there any hope for that? No, I mean, uh, it would be one of the all-time uh, power conference Cinderella stories. I, that's not, I don't, that, that's not in the cards here. I would be, I'd be stunned at that. Ohio State has been an underwhelming team. It's had some injury issues there, and now it's just, it's one of these jobs that uh, that is going to be highly coveted, and we will see uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Because that fan base, for as much as they like football, uh, Holtman seat has been hot, and they they command and demand thanks to what Thad Mata did for almost two decades, NCAA tournament appearances every single year. Holtman went one year without getting there, and then that obviously was tracking to a second straight season here. The pressure was big enough, the buyout was manageable enough, and now they move on. Yeah, and certainly want to get to the tournament and make it past the second round once they go dancing as well. Matt Norlander talking the breaking news with Chris Holtman being fired as the head coach of Ohio State basketball. Thank you so much for your time, Matt. And you can always catch even more basketball on his podcast along with Gary Parrish. The Eye on College Basketball. Like and subscribe to get the audio that you are looking for for every step of the way during college basketball season.